today we're going to be talking about some tips and information regarding how much to feed your snake, how often, how big their meals should be, and basically just go over tips regarding different types of species because there are a lot of different snakes out there and they have slightly different care when it comes to feeding based on their body. Uh, because all of them come in different shapes and sizes. So we have to pay attention to those things in order to make sure that we are feeding them properly and giving them the proper diet so that way they can be healthy in captivity. So when it comes to feeding snakes, honestly, most of it, the information is going to be the same. Um, there isn't too much of a differentiation between the snakes, um, but we'll get into that a little bit later. The first thing we're going to discuss is how often to feed a baby snake. So no matter what body type, no matter what species it is, if you have a baby snake, you're going to want to be feeding it one time a week, always. I always recommend to pick one specific day of the week, make that feeding day, try to feed your baby snake around the same time of the day of the same day of the week also because they will pay attention to these things and if you're trying to build a relationship with your snake and you want to handle it a good way to let your snake know when it's feeding time is to feed it around the same time so most snakes are nocturnal and you're going to be feeding them at nighttime so i recommend to feed your baby snake also at nighttime one time a week they're going to start learning that routine and they will understand when it's feeding time and then if you handle them during the day and it's a day like also you want to avoid handling like near the feeding time um, a little bit before it's good to avoid because your snake may think it's feeding time they might strike at you um, and then obviously you don't want to be handling your baby snake after you fed them either they need a whole day to digest at, at the least so basically that's it when you're feeding a baby try to do it one time a week um, some people recommend to do more than that. A lot of them try to, I think it's called power feeding when they want their snake to grow really, really fast. I don't recommend doing that. I don't think that that's healthy. I would recommend to just feed your baby snake one time a week. I recommend feeding younger snakes at least once a week up to the very first year of their life. After that is when things can change a little bit. We're going to get a little bit more into that. Um, the second tip is to figure out what size to feed your snake. So this goes for babies, juveniles, adults, whatever the snake is. The best thing to do is to pick a food source, usually a rodent, um, that is as thick in girth as the thickest part of your snake. So a lot of people get this confused because they look at the snake's head and they think, oh, okay, well, it can eat something like this. Like, I don't know. I used to think the same thing when I got my first snake. I just did not understand because it was a ball python. They have very thick bodies. They're gonna need a thicker portion of food than something that is the size of their head. It doesn't matter what size their head is. They can extend those jaws and eat the meal that is needed. So you just wanna make sure it's as thick as the thickest part of their girth. You don't want it to be overly big to the point where you can see the complete lump in their body once they eat it. That might be a little bit too large. And you also don't wanna like, I mean, if you don't see it, it's not that big of a deal. You wanna make sure it's thick enough to sustain your snake and give it a healthy diet that it needs. So now we're gonna get into where it differentiates a little bit and the different things that you can do once your snake is older. So after that first year of life, when it's a little bit older, it's more established, it's doing really good and it's growing, um, you don't have to continue feeding once a week, though you can. This is where it gets different. Um, it depends on the type of snake that you have. So let's say you have a larger bodied snake like a boa constrictor. What you can do with them is actually just feed them one large meal once a month. Or you can do kind of mediocre meals every two weeks instead of feeding every single week. Um, so it does depend. What I recommend if you don't know what to do with your snake is to look at it. If you are worried that it is gaining too much weight or it seems a little bit too chunky for the snake that it's supposed to be, um, then you can feed less or less frequent meals. You can go down to every two weeks or maybe the one big meal once a month. Um, it does depend on the snake though. So if you have, let's say a ball python, they are still a more thick bodied snake. Um, I would recommend to always at least do every two weeks for them. Um, but 
if you can get away with it and you're trying to do a diet with your snake, you can just feed it one time a month, but it would have to be like a really big meal. Again, when you're doing the big meals, you don't want it to be like overly large too, to the point where you can see this giant lump in your snake either, because that's also not helpful. So if you have a slim bodied snake, like something that is arboreal, a lot of arboreal snakes are going to be really slim looking like green tree pythons, um, Amazon tree boas, and emerald tree boas, all that good stuff. They are very thin looking snakes. And a lot of the times people will think that they're too thin because they're used to comparing them to like ball pythons and their thicker bodies, which is natural for them, but that's not natural for a green tree python. So with green tree pythons, they're actually a species that they can have a hard time digesting frequent meals often. So for them, once you reach that first year point of feeding them once a week, for them specifically, any arboreal snake, I would recommend to feed them every two weeks rather than every single week um, because it's simply just too much on them. And a lot of the times they can actually get constipated. It can cause issues with their spine. It can cause other internal issues and it's not good. So the best thing to do is to do less frequent. And also you do want to do a little bit of smaller meals for animals that are arboreal like green tree pythons. Um, for instance, with mine, she is, I think, she might be around five years old now. Um, she actually eats every two weeks, and she is a picky one. Um, I, a few years ago, she just stopped eating frozen thawed, and now she only eats live, which I absolutely hate. I give her two small mice every two weeks, and that is her meal. The mice are really small, but she is a thin bodied snake and that is a substantial meal for her when she gets two of them for every two weeks. It works perfectly for her. So that is her system. Um, not everyone has to follow like exactly what I'm doing. I'm just trying to give examples of how it could be because it is a little bit different depending on the species that you have. I have another ball python Casper who is around I think two or three years old now. He would love to eat every single week at this point, but we aren't really doing that anymore with him. I have bumped him back to every two weeks as well. So all of the snakes are now eating every two weeks, except for Bowie, because Bowie eats once a month. Bowie was the one snake that I have that just seemed a little too chunky. She was growing way too fast. And a lot of you guys were commenting on it. And I was like, I know I'm slowing down. I'm slowing down. She has um, smaller meals now, but she also, I went down to smaller meals at first every two weeks, and now she's down to eating, um, I think it's a medium rat, one medium rat once a month. She does get some little treats here and there because Chaos, my other ball python, also eats live, which is very frustrating. And a lot of the times he doesn't want to eat his food. I like to offer it no matter what. So Bowie is my garbage disposal snake. So every now and then, aside from that medium rat once a month, she will get these tiny little mice as snacks that I need to just feed off because I don't want to keep pet mice in my house. Um, so that is my system with all of my snakes. Something else that I haven't talked about on here is variety when it comes to feeding snakes. There are actually a lot of different options. It is definitely the safest thing to do is stick with rodents. If they're eating that and they're doing well, that's fantastic. If you do want to give them some enrichment and different and different variances in their diet, you can feed them other things though. I actually order my food from rodentpro.com um, and they have a lot of options on there. You can try little chicks, you can try guinea pigs, you can try bunnies. Bunnies are more for really large species, so keep that in mind. I'm pretty sure the guinea pigs too. They're, I haven't ordered them. I'm assuming that they're kind of big though, so that would be more for like a larger bodied snake. I wouldn't recommend getting that for a ball python. I think that would be too much. Um, but yeah, there's different things you can try. You can try chicks for ball pythons. I've seen people try that. I haven't tried it because honestly, Casper is not picky. I feel like he might go for it. I could potentially try it with him. Uh, Chaos is extremely picky and barely eats his rodents as it is. It has to be like really small and alive for him to eat it. That's the only way that he'll do it. So it's very frustrating. You basically just gotta, it's like a trial and error thing that you gotta do with your snakes. You just gotta see what works for yours. You can try different things. 
Um, just keep in mind their weight, what their body should look like. A lot of the times it is kind of difficult to tell from photos um, or you're just not too familiar with other snake species. I would recommend if you're worried about your snake's weight, obviously you can take it to a vet. They can let you know if it's in a good range or not. Um, but based on looking at it, you can look at pictures of healthy ball pythons or whatever snake you have, or you can look at overweight pictures online to get a good idea and see if your snake is looking a little bit overweight, if you should be feeding less frequently or maybe a little bit smaller of a meal just to make sure your snake is healthy. Other things that you can do is just have a larger enclosure, upgrade your enclosure, give them more space and more opportunity for climbing and exercise. That will also be very healthy for your snake as well. And then the last thing we're gonna briefly talk about, which is like one of the biggest, like most stressful things when you're keeping snakes is feeding strikes. So feeding strikes can happen for a number of different reasons. Some of those reasons may be improper temperature, humidity, husbandry, all of that stuff, and your snake is stressed out so it's not eating. It could be not eating because you just put it in a new enclosure and it needs more time to adjust. Um, it could be not eating because it is mating season for that species of snake. Um, that actually happened very unexpectedly with Bowie one spring and she went months without eating and I was extremely stressed out because she is not one to turn down a meal. It can happen so that might be another reason and then ball pythons are notorious for just going on feeding strikes for what seems no reason at all some of them may not eat for months some of them have actually gone years without eating if your snake does go on a feeding strike make sure that it is not losing weight it is very important to make sure that they're not losing weight because if they are losing weight that could be an indication that they may have internal parasites or some type of illness going on with them that they need to get checked out in order to feel better because if they're sick they obviously don't have their appetite and that's why they're not eating and that's not healthy so these are just some things to keep in mind um, don't freak out too much when your ball python just decides not to eat chaos is my most stressful ball python and he it's it's so crazy it really his schedule makes no sense some months he'll eat one mouse some months he won't and then he'll just go back and forth it's like every few months he'll eat and then he'll go back on a feeding strike and then he'll eat a couple times in a row and then he's back not eating that snake makes no sense to me but I'm glad that I have Casper because Casper eats every single week he I mean he eats every two weeks now but he tries to eat every single week. He just loves his food. So he makes up for chaos because chaos likes to stress me out when it comes to feeding time. But I hope this gives you a good idea of examples of like how snakes can be so different. They all have different personalities, needs, preferences when it comes to food. And the best thing to do is just do what works for your snake. Make sure that what you're doing is healthy. Your snake isn't overweight. It's not too thin. Um, when you're looking at a snake that seems too thin, you will notice that their spine is really sticking out. That is not healthy and not good. Although people think that they see that on green tree pythons, which you are more inclined to see their spine because they're a slimmer snake. That is actually normal for them. It can get to a point where it's not normal and they are underweight but for the most part, they're not gonna look the same as like a ball python, which is gonna be way fuller of a snake. So I recommend just always looking online for other examples to see if you're worried about your snake being overweight. So these are just some tips regarding how to feed your snake, what to feed your snake, and all of that good stuff. You guys probably already know a lot of this. Um, if you guys have any picky snakes or some crazy stories to tell or have any other tips, please go ahead and leave it in the comment section and also let us know what type of species you're keeping. I think that it's important to share our experiences with others so that way they can one, feel more comforted when they're going through stressful things and they're like, is this normal? And if they see other people are going through it or they learn advice on like how to fix it and correct it and improve. So yeah, I hope that this video is helpful. Thank you guys so much for being here today and I will see you guys in the next one.